All right, I bring in my compadre from uh, the NFL Media Group, um, our uh, our information man, Deluxe, Ian Rappaport. How are you, sir? What's going on, Rich? How you, are you? you Congratulations on your on your new landing spot. I appreciate uh, that. Thank you. It's a very cozy place. Very cool. I appreciate that. We're very, very happy here. Um, and so, and and thank goodness, uh, healthy. I trust everybody healthy in in your neck of the woods as well. Yeah, I mean, healthy as far as the coronavirus is, is concerned. Not healthy as far as I have a five year old and a six year old, and all they've been doing is throwing each other off the walls. Okay. Um. So you know, I mean, I would say concussion protocol has been <laughs> implemented in my house, and we're good to go. Father of the year, Ian Rappaport, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um. So let's get into um what you tweeted about today. Uh, definitely intrigued me. Jordan Love, wild card of the draft. Walk me through your reporting on that one, right here. This is a really interesting one because. You know, so many people I thought uh, probably around the combine were thinking, all right, four quarterbacks go early. You're thinking, you know, probably, you know, there was a lot of buzz about the Raiders and Tom Brady, which didn't end up happening, but there was buzz about that. And all right, so four quarterbacks probably go in the top 12, and there's your quarterbacks. And now I'm not so sure because I think Jordan Love's tape two years ago was really, really good. The person people like, interviews have been good. The tape last year was not good. Um, and so I think teams are trying to figure that out and, and, like, what kind of prospect is he actually? And, you know, certainly someone who is probably not going to, you hope, not going to play in the 2020 season just to sit and learn. So it doesn't feel to me from the people I've spoken with, like, that sounds like someone who goes early in the top 10. I mean, just look at the draft. Let's assume, just for the sake of this argument, that Jordan Loves gets by, gets by the Raiders. Who actually takes a quarterback there? Like, there's just – it's a vast array of non-quarterback teams. You know, maybe someone like the, you know, Patriots or Packers or something trades up, you know, or the Saints, a team with an entrenched veteran. Uh, Brian Hoyer, Aaron Rodgers, obviously Drew Brees would be the veterans there. Um, i say with a little bit of this, but that would be the thought, is someone in the late teens potentially trading up for Jordan Love and having him sit a year. Okay. And then, I mean, how does that not – other than the uh, tape doesn't speak very well. Uh, I mean, it just continues to sound like the connective tissue to the uh, Patrick Mahomes story, right? That the guy's got a ton of talent, an absolute ton of natural talent, um, and, uh, and doesn't have to play for a year and can learn a system, and then year two, all, off we go. Maybe he wets his beak a little bit in a week 17 yeah. start. Um, so... Uh, But walk me through what evaluators are saying about Jordan Love that might not be so Mahomes-ish, what you're hearing. Well, there is definitely some Mahomes stuff there because you can watch him make certain throws, just kind of the loose athleticism, the way he kind of carries himself, his success in a similar system. There's a lot of Mahomes there. But I think the, you know, last year at Utah State, decision-making, not good, just, you know, inaccurate throws, um, just pure inaccuracy. I mean, I think that's the kind of thing that they're having trouble with. So it's like there's so much to like from a just pure ability standpoint. Like he looks like a pitcher. Like he, the way he delivers it is so fluid and so athletic that, you know, you can you can take that and turn it into a football player and just might not be there yet. And what's interesting, similar to Mahomes, like that causes you to slide a little bit because you don't know what you're actually getting and probably ends you up with a better team. And I think for Mahomes, it worked out pretty good. Of course it did. Ian Rappaport here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, you said you're, you haven't spoken to a single team that does not believe Burrow being number one. You haven't heard from a single yeah. person that does not think that the kid who just threw 60 touchdowns isn't the first overall pick in the draft. Uh, the, the, the Obviously, the combine, his statements at the combine, as well as uh, what's going on in the real world, obviously, is knocked uh, this story off of what was a, a huge uh, smoke and maybe potentially fire story in January and then at the Super Bowl, Burrow not wanting to go to Cincinnati. Is there anything that you're hearing that somehow, some way, that the Bengals do not take Burrow or Burrow forces his way to somewhere else? You got anything on that front? I, I haven't heard any any anything to lead me down that path. I mean, they have spent – the Bengals have spent a lot of, and I, I think my former colleague and our former colleague, Al, Albert Breer, mentioned this yesterday. The Bengals have maxed out their video time with Joe Burrow. That is definitely true. I mean, they have gone above and beyond the kind of conversations they've had with him, talking about 
plays and playbooks. And, you know, it's a, he's a draft guy, so you can actually discuss everything. They have gone deep with him on football, on getting to know him. Um, and it sounds like it's gone really well. I mean, I, I – and then the other thing is, you know, from the Bengals sources I've spoken with, when I mention a possible trade, they almost, like, wave me off. It's like, come on, bro. Like, come on. Because I think this is probably as clear number one pick – as we've had in a long time, the film is just, you know, poise, accuracy, decision making, big moments, uh, just non nonstop. I mean, it's this seems like probably the most obvious choice in a very long time. And so the the Tua market, uh, I've talked about this with Peter King yesterday, uh, Ian, and how the Tua market is um, an iffy subject seemingly all of a sudden despite yeah. despite um the video that came out that shows him looking spry and um and the question about the tour market and uh, justin herbert and the evaluation um mel kuyper having herbert over to uh, in his mock draft to miami what are you hearing about on that front behind burrow and the quarterback scenario i wouldn't i wouldn't be that surprised if herbert goes over to uh, um he's just there's a lot of fewer questions. I mean, you have some questions with Herbert where it's like you want a little more. And I think anyone who spent time watching him just from the TV copy, not all 20, just like the regular TV copy of Herbert, you say there's so much there, I want a little more, just some more plays. But as far as questions go, that's basically it. Like he's a good, smart kid, looks like a quarterback, great hair. I mean, there's a lot to like there. Hmm. Um, with Tua, there's just a lot more questions. And the problem is, Rich, Everything health-wise, he's done perfectly. Scans are great. He had no loss of blood. His mobility is great. He looks athletic. He looks like a quarterback. You still don't know what's going to happen in, like, three years or two years or five years or 20 years. It's just it, you just can't predict it. And so no amount of discussions will help you predict what's going to happen basically to his body. Um, and then the other thing is, like we were talking about with Jordan Love, once you get – like, let's say – somehow that the Chargers go, you know what, we're rolling with Tyrod, we're going to take a left tackle, and we're just going to be okay. Well, then who actually takes Tua? Like, when, if he gets past six, hmm. I, I mean, maybe the Raiders, but, like, actually who? And that's, and that's one thing I'm going to have to make my – sort of make sense of come draft night is, like, if he starts to slide, where are the teams that will come grab him? Well, what about Jacksonville? I mean, Jacksonville's sitting there um... – towards the end of the 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 front 10 and and they have Gardner Minshew obviously Minshew mania was terrific the question is is how sustainable might he be as a uh, a quarterback in this league as a, a starting quarterback in this league uh Cam's out there Jameis is out there Dalton's out there um what do you think of the Jaguars market and uh thoughts and then of course you've got uh, those veterans sitting out there if you can put those all together for me Ian yeah, I think for the quarterback market for the Jaguars, I mean, I've heard some Dalton stuff. I know they're interested. I don't think they trade for Andy Dalton, but I know that they're interested in him as a possible backup if he gets released. I have not heard anything, and I do believe at some point they bring in a backup quarterback. I just I haven't heard that they would take a starting quarterback in the top ten. I mean, to me, they seem more like a team that either – one could trade out and just fill different holes on the roster or like, you know, like Isaiah Simmons would be someone who you could see if, if he's even there, just moving them all around the defense and having some fun, you know, being sort of like the kind of like cam chancellor basically in that Seattle ish defense. I just, for them, I mean, they seem like they're going forward with Minshew mania and the trade of Nick Foles to me all but solidified that because they weren't even going to let a, training camp competition happen it is all you know mustache going forward for jacksonville so what about Jameis and cam uh, anybody talking to them right now or they're just going to wait till after next thursday see what's up uh cam wants cam wants to be a starter a i mean i would say at least the chance to compete for a starting quarterback job i don't i don't see one out there right now so my sense is cam is going to wait until there is one you know like He's got money, obviously. It's not like he needs it. I would not be surprised to see Cam waiting, and it's August, and there's a quarterback injury, and there's Cam still available. Huh. You know, I mean, it's basically basically the same answer that Sam Bradford was, except you don't have to trade for him. 
And then there's Jameis. And, I mean, and then there's Jameis, who, you know, I'd be honest, like I was a little bit surprised that he didn't end up back in Tampa, backing up Tom Brady. I feel like that would have been a good opportunity for him. Um, that's another one where, you know, I haven't quite found a spot for him. And I, I mean, he's going to sign. I imagine he'll be on the team. Probably not going to be for a lot of money. He'll be a backup. Um, I just think, you know, unless I'm crazy, it'll probably be whoever misses on a preferred, you know, early to mid-round quarterback in the draft probably says, you know what, I'm now going to sign Jameis for a couple million a year, and whatever I get, I get. Ian Rappaport here on the Rich Eisen Show. You also said Jake Fromm is suddenly rising up boards or at least creating some buzz. Um, Walk me through the quarterback uh, draft board after Love, which obviously includes Herbert Tua and Burrow above him. Walk me through that, how you're seeing everything. I I think it's, you know, right now it seems it's Jacob Eason, um, who is another one who looks just like a quarterback, has an incredible arm, you know, throws it like a baseball player and sometimes doesn't always exactly reach the intended target. I mean, I've heard anything from him, from Eason, from, you know, maybe late one to like fourth rounder. Um, I think he's kind of all over the map. I think Jalen Hurts has had a really, really good pre-draft time. You know, to me, going in, I felt like he was a fourth rounder going into, say, like the senior bowl or the combine. And now I wouldn't be surprised if he's a second rounder. You know, teams like like maybe the Raiders take him in the second round or something huh. like that. The Packers, um, Chargers, you know, if they go tackle. I think, you know, Hurts is probably looking pretty good there. Uh, and then Jake Fromm has has been really interesting, you know, because he didn't have a pro day. And if he had a pro day, you, you know, you'd probably see some throws that maybe he didn't make because he doesn't have a great arm. That wouldn't have been a great look for him. Instead, you know, I guess the only person to ever have a positive with the coronavirus, um, no pro day. So it's been all discussions and video conferences, and he's brilliant. Coaches love him. Um, I could see him as a third rounder and then – you know, he either becomes Case Keenum or Kirk Cousins, or he becomes Chase Daniel, who plays very little and is very, very rich. <laughs> that is one way to, to put it right there. Are the Patriots uh, in the quarterback conversation for the draft? And if so, how? I mean, walk me what through your reporting on what New England's quarterback room is going to look like this fall and and how it might be affected over what happens next weekend. Yeah, I would say the Patriots are very firmly in the quarterback mix. Um, they are just – they're so far back, you know. So I'm i am having trouble figuring out, like, what are they actually going to do? Because, you know, they're up in the 20s. I mean, you know, Jordan Love sliding into the teens and them grabbing him is a scenario that I've thought a lot about. Um, they also had some success with Jimmy Garoppolo in the second round. So maybe they try to repeat that. I just – they don't have a second rounder. Um, so they either could trade back and create one maybe, or they could use some third and fourth and trade up in the first. I just, the Patriots are going to take a quarterback probably with a premium pick. I would just imagine it's not at the pick they currently have. So I would, I see the Patriots moving up for a quarterback or sliding back and then maybe also taking a quarterback. Well, I mean, you know, obviously, they're... you know, teams aren't going to show their hand before draft at all, and the Patriots never show their hand. And Belichick speaking yesterday, I mean, good luck trying to figure out how they evaluate Stidham long-term or, you know, <laughs> I mean, he's asked about Brady and his response was essentially, yeah, we, we, we went through all that. And I guess uh, his asked and answered was yeah. never being asked, and his answer was in his press release statement. You know, uh, that's just – that's just uh, – it was classic up in New England to just shut the whole thing down. But, you know, uh, I guess that's the question is how does Belichick view Stidham right now and him and McDaniels view Stidham? He could love him. We, we, we have no earthly idea, do we, at all? My, my understanding is they, they very much like Stidham. They think his potential is great. Um, they, there's, there's a lot of positivity and a lot to like. The problem is they don't actually know because he's never done it. And he's never, I mean, you know, he's been in games, but it's when you're the guy, life is different, right? Like you spend your life doing interviews and, and production meetings and you're leading meetings and 
you're taking responsibility, which is very, very hard because sometimes people are not entirely nice to you. And when you throw an interception, it's just life as a starting quarterback is hard. And uh, they don't know how he would react. And so I don't think that they're going into the draft saying, all right, we got Stid and we are good, like say, like the Chiefs did with Mahomes. Like it's not like that. I think it's we're going to add to the quarterback room. We'll put them together in, you know, God willing, July and August and see what happens. I mean, my guess right now is Brian Hoyer is the starting quarterback of the Patriots in 2020. But I think that is something that will be ever evolving as we get through next season. Ian, you're the man. Thanks for the time. We'll chat next week. Always enjoy hanging out, Rich. Thanks for having me. You got it. Thanks very much. Ian Rappaport here. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.